welcome in today's episode we are going to see how to use keyboard shortcuts more efficiently i'm sure all of us use keyboard shortcuts on a daily basis but there are many nuances which you may or may not have noticed so let's get started now the first thing to understand is when do you need keyboard shortcuts when do you need keyboard shortcuts many people ask me this question many sessions they say no no teach me keyboard shortcuts it doesn't work like that if you go to help file in any application and go to the help keyboard shortcut section you will find hundreds if not thousands of them trying to go through that list and by hurting them is not a very good idea you'll get confused so the basic prerequisite for when do you need keyboard shortcuts is when you use something frequently it's that simple first thing you have to do is to start noticing the features or functionality or buttons which you do use more frequently having done that key shortcuts we call them keyboard shortcuts but shortcut basically means to invoke a particular feature or a functionality quickly traditionally it is keyboard but it could be keyboard or mouse or a combination of the two so with that let's see how to get this done now before we go ahead we have to understand some very very commonly required keyboard shortcuts so let's start with something called dialogs what do i mean by dialogs this is a dialog the simplest possible dialog you can think of this is a file run dialog i'm sure you have seen all of them all of you have seen this correct now what is there is no need for a keyboard shortcut here really but you should know few things remember my cursor is here but one of the buttons has a darker border exactly how the border looks that depends on the version of windows your theme and so on but there is a darker border so what happens now that button okay is obviously going to be the most commonly used button so many people type something here and then take the trouble to take the mouse and then click on okay that's not required the darker border button you press by typing enter key so enter key is the shortcut for the default button and of course escape is the key for cancel there is one more you will notice that there is a button called browse there what is the shortcut for that in this dialog it may not be very relevant because we have only three small buttons but in a complicated dialog it may be very relevant so if you want to go from one place to another in the dialog using keyboard look at the button which has a underline so browse button b is underline so if i now go and click alt and b that will be the button chosen so notice the underline keys alt with that button will give me browse so no need to go using alt b is browse so enter escape alt b and just to complete the topic alt o by the way there is a drop down how do you open a drop down many of us take the hand away from the keyboard hold the mouse and then open the drop down there is another way of doing that to press alt down arrow alt down arrow always opens the drop down if your focus is there all right so that's about dialogs now let's talk about generally how do you find the keys and that's an important thing how do you find the keys for frequently used options so let's see that let's take an example here i have excel i am sure you have already got conversant with many of the excel shortcuts but i am not talking about specific shortcuts i am telling you the concepts right now so there are lots of buttons which buttons should you remember shortcuts for so here is the deal frequently used buttons now which button you use frequently i will not know you will know it but because you use that button frequently you just click on it without taking a pause and checking does this particular button have a keyboard shortcut of course every button does not have a keyboard shortcut but 
If it is a frequently used button, it's in your interest to find a keyboard shortcut for it. How do we find it? It's very simple. If you hover on any button, obviously you see the shortcut. You have seen Control B, everyone knows Control I, Control S for save. But you'll notice that wrap text, for example, is a frequently used button. Now, because you are going to every day click on wrap text hundreds of times, you will never discover whether it has a keyboard shortcut. So how do you do that? Next time you are clicking on a button, if you think it is a frequently used button, go there, but do not click on it. Stay there for a second. You will see a tooltip. And in that tooltip, you will see a shortcut if there is one. So now, this is a frequently used button, but this does not have a shortcut. Now what do we do? We will see that a little later. But there could be frequently used buttons, which you have not noticed the shortcut because you never hovered on them for a second. So that's the way to discover shortcuts for frequently used buttons. You don't have to buy heart it. If there is a shortcut very soon, you are going to remember it. Here is one which I'm sure you will like very much. Paste special is something we do very often. The shortcut is Control Alt V. Why is that important? Because Control V is paste. Control Alt V is paste special. It's natural. And ergonomically also, when you are pressing Control V, your typically little finger is on V and you're pressing Control V. Some intermediate button can also press Alt. So that ergonomics is also important. Why am I saying that? Because very often I have seen people doing undo. Undo is not Control U. I'm sure you know that. Undo is Control Z. Why is undo Control Z? Because there is a reason. Why is there a Control Z instead of Control U? For the simple reason, look at the keyboard, then you will understand. Control Z. Z is the key nearest to Control key. And this, if you don't notice, what do many people end up doing? They press this Control key using right hand and Z using left hand, defeating the purpose. It's no longer a shortcut. It's a long cut. Defeats the purpose. So remember that. Use it to your advantage. Why Control Z is undo is because that's the most commonly used shortcut in the world. It's not Control C, Control V. Undo is more common than copy paste. Anyway, so now coming back, let's see what to do about the keys which do not have a predefined keyboard shortcut. What can be done about those keys? Now, I am not going to go into programming and third party tools which can allow you to do stuff. There is a simple way which is right within Office tools. So let's see. This is wrap text. I use it every day. I don't find a keyboard shortcut by default. Am I stuck? No, I am not stuck. Now I said shortcuts can be two types mouse shortcut and a keyboard shortcut. So because you don't have a keyboard shortcut, Let's at least create a mouse shortcut for it. Now you'll ask me, what is a mouse shortcut? I see the button, I click on it. That's as short as it gets. What can be shorter? So notice there, where is this wrap text? It's in home tab. Can you guarantee that home tab is always open? No, of course we can't. So maybe data tab is open and now you need to go to wrap text. Now wrap text is a fairly common button, but many other not so familiar button you have to first scratch your head and say, which menu should I go to? That's one click and then click on the button. So one click for home tab, second click for wrap text. That is a long cut. So remember, when you don't know something, right click. So what did I do? I went on the wrap text button, did not click on it. I right click on it. And now it is saying, do you want to add to whatever that weird thing, quick access toolbar? In simple terms, it's a custom toolbar. You can do this in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. So I added it. Where did it go? So here it is. Normally on the top, you will see save, undo, redo. Those are the three default buttons in that area. So what I just did, I added this guy called wrap text right here. And because of that now, I don't care which menu I am in. I can still always see the wrap text button and click on it. So in that sense, it's a mouse shortcut. 
now that you have discovered it it's a good idea to keep looking for an opportunity to evolve your own custom toolbar that will simplify your day to day work how do you do that same concept whichever options you are clicking on very frequently go there for example merge and center very commonly used right click on it and keep on adding it to quick access toolbar so just for demo purpose i am going to add lots of buttons there don't do that you should ideally add buttons which don't have a keyboard shortcut but you need them frequently for demo i am just adding lots of buttons now this is not a keyboard shortcut that's obvious but it's not actually why is it not obvious because now i have 1 2 3 4 lots of buttons now there is a special key on the keyboard which is called what there is a special key on the keyboard which is called alt and you must have noticed that key before if you go to any application if you go to any application and press alt key what happens it gives you this thing it gives you all the characters and you can manually or keyboard navigate the ribbon that's why that key is there so that alt key now if i press in excel notice i have many buttons here which i have added i just press and release the alt key normally we press alt key with alt tab or some other key this time press release don't keep it pressed notice what happened all the buttons which i had added earlier have got numbers now the menus below home insert they get character shortcut so if i want to go to formulas i'll press m now now within formula i have many characters you don't have to remember them you see them and press them but that's not what i'm talking about right now what else happened when i clicked on the alt key the buttons i had put in the quick access toolbar got numbers from 1 2 3 4 of course after 9 what happened oh after 9 it became 0 9 logically you would have thought it should have been 1 0 right no not that way again ergonomics look at the keyboard if the next shortcut were 1 0 that would be a long cut that's why when it's two digits is 0 9 which is near each other so a lot of thought goes into making this happen to make our life easier we have to understand it and use it to your advantage advantage so bottom line now alt 1 is my keyboard shortcut for for what for what wrap text like that you can get nine very useful keys one alt 1 to alt 9 in every application of course you can remember double digit but they are a little more painful so now what is the best practice first step create a quick access toolbar now when you create obviously you're going to add more items this will keep sharing the same space with the title and titles can be long that will get cut off so what do you do you right click on the quick access toolbar right click on the quick access toolbar and say show it below the ribbon so it comes down here it doesn't interfere with the file name title nothing and you get more space having said that once you have filled it up you may add buttons to it in whatever order it comes to your mind but after you have filled it up make sure you reorder the buttons and the first nine buttons are the really useful ones that's how you create a useful very fast custom toolbar for each application now having done that what do you want to do with it of course you want to use it but beyond that can you do something what do i mean by that beyond that means what i have already created a custom toolbar what else do i want to do with it so i showed you how to put it above and below now there are some other nuances you should know so let me show you some examples of that so let me show you my custom toolbar for let's say powerpoint you see this has lots of buttons and there are buttons 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 now this can get confusing you may want to put some things which are dividing them in groups like in the main menu we have vertical lines so how do you order these custom buttons right click customize quick access toolbar and here we see all the things which i have now there is something called a separator which will show you as vertical lines so that you can logically see them 
right now i have zoomed in the scale on my ui that's why you are not able to see it so logically divide them and from here itself while you are customizing it you can move them up or down to make sure the first nine are the really commonly used buttons now if you have taken so much effort to create custom toolbars why not share it with other people of course that is possible so customize quick access toolbar export it it will actually give you a file with a long extension called exported ui take it send it to other people let them import it now we are talking we are not only becoming efficient ourselves we are making others also efficient and if you are from it you can deploy this using group policy or endpoint manager across the organization which is really nice and while we are at that let's see the uses of some of the most common keys so alt i have already shown you what was the purpose of alt key first was to open the shortcuts in the menus there is another purpose suppose i have right click here this is a long menu then i have gone to filter sort now i am at two level menus then i decide i don't want to sort i can want to get rid of the menu because it's a menu in a menu you'll have to press escape escape twice so that's another claim to fame for alt whenever any level of menus are open just press alt and release it all menus are gone so that's another purpose of alt key now we also have control key i'm sure you have used some of them but generally control is used for multi select what does that mean i can select this 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 is multi select even in a file explorer you can select control select control select so control the other thing control does is it duplicates things if you use it while dragging so let's see that in powerpoint because it's easier but even here i have a sheet i press the control key and drag the sheet notice there is a plus sign and it became a copy of that sheet exactly the same thing happens in powerpoint as well so if i drag this and press control key it made a copy this works generally not only in office but many other applications as well so that's the purpose of control key and then what is left we have the shift key shift key has again multiple purposes what are the purposes one is a constraint what does that mean if i am inserting a shape for example i am going to draw a circle we never end up getting a perfect circle so press shift while dragging you will always get a perfect circle same way i am rotating this i want to rotate it in fixed degrees so press shift key then rotate then it will go like this so you can actually make something perfectly vertical very easily using the shift key so constraint key that's number one another level of constraint now notice this and this are aligned we can see the bars on top and bottom now for whatever reason this shape i want to move to the right i can do that but while moving it to the right sometimes it moves down also and disturbs the alignment so shift is a constraint key so press shift key and then drag it to right even if you make a mistake even if you want you can't move it up and down now because the direction of movement is constrained to horizontal of course it could have been vertical also so press shift key the first direction of movement becomes the constraint and of course shift key is also for selection and shift key also has another purpose that is for navigation what does that mean if i am here and then i click here the cursor is going to move from here to here but if the shift key was pressed it will select between the beginning and the end so that is how shift key is also a select key in that sense and finally we have windows key i am sure you know many of its uses but here are some common ones you should know when i say windows p is projector it means if you have dual screen do you want to duplicate the screen or do you want to have two different screens or only show this one or only show that one generally we on a laptop struggle with is it function a fit or what depending on the brand this is independent of the brand of your laptop or pc windows p manages multiple displays so with that i am going to end today's session 
I'm sure you found this useful. Of course, you will like subscribe because this is really, really useful. Also, check out my blog. With that, we will end today's session. Thank you.